Hey guys, Matt Donald here. I can't find the microphone. It's behind the couch somewhere, and I need to get this episode out. So I'm recording it from this distant place. Where could it be? It's 20,000 leagues under the couch at this point. I have no idea, but the show must go on! If you want more professional content like this, then you can subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com slash matthewdonald. This month we're talking about the Speculative Evolutionary Dinosaur Project, or something like that. It's called SPEC for short. It's a website that details a speculative evolution of dinosaurs, about what would happen if they didn't go extinct, what would they evolve, what would they turn into, all the crazy designs. It's great! We talk about it. Links in the description before you can sign up to the Patreon. Thank you for your support. Have a good day. Now I'm off to find my mic! I'm so professional! Roar! Growl, snarl, bellow. Welcome to Paleobites, the podcast as bodacious as the Cretaceous. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> My name's Matthew Dahl, and each week I and a rotating series of guest co hosts talk about and rate a genius of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week I'm joined by someone who just told me that they're going to put uh, a spirit of this dinosaur in their next book. Possibly. Possibly. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, possibly. I don't know. We'll see. No spoilers. It's Stephen Currow. How are you? I'm well, thank you. And yourself? <laughs> I'm, I am quite well. Uh, we're talking about a good one. We're talking about a good one today. Oh, it's yes. pretty good. Before we get into it, we got to ask the dinosaur related question. Which, so what's the dinosaur related question? What's the question? Oh, you want me to ask the question this time? Yeah. If you could take an attribute from a dinosaur and fuse it into your DNA, what would it be? Oh, that's right. I did. We did talk about this, and I, I remember what I said was uh, the t- smell of T-Rex. Right. Because, I, I, I don't know, I'm not athletic enough to want to be stronger or clawier or <laughs> bitier or like... I mean, biggest olfactory system in the in the uh, animal kingdom. So. Yeah. I mean, we, we, would make, we are in Greeley currently, and that may make okay. this kind of unbearable. Maybe but, not the best here. <laughs> but uh, it does mean... Like, they, not so much in terms of smell. I want... A bigger smell usually means stronger taste, too. Uh-huh. I could really savor a good cheesecake. <laughs> so that would really like, enhance your, uh, your culinary experience Oh, God, overall. it'd be so good. There you I, go. I would become a food critic. Maybe not a food critic, because it, it wouldn't be fair for me to <laughs> tell what other people would think would taste good. But I would just enjoy every meal. I was just, mm. Perfect. Uh, uh, how about you? Yes. I would want the ability to sprout micro micro raptor wings so I could fly. Okay. So, cool. <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's just. It's a weird animal with four wings. Do we even. Is micro. Yeah, it could fly. I was like, sometimes we go back and forth whether it could fly or just glide. I think it could fly. Even, we, could, even if it was only gliding, I, I could jump really high and then glide and it would be fun. I, I almost but, imagine like an action sequence in my head. You know, remember in the last Hobbit movie, there was that scene that everyone made fun of where Legolas is hopping from stone to stone as the, the, people made fun of that people thought it was silly i guess Be- i didn't think it was silly well i don't i didn't think it was silly either because it was part of the it was part of the elves like the whole point of the elves is that they were light-footed like there's that one part right. of the wing where he was walking atop the snow everyone was trudging through it he's not a human in his fantasy What's yeah but but i feel like it, what if you had something like that but you had like a raptor not necessarily one that flies but like one like Donaticus or whatever mm. that like as it starts falling, it just starts like as it goes from like flapping its wings, kind of trying to give it just enough lift, just, to just enough lift to get okay. up the the couple. That, you know that would be that would be cool. I, I mean, mean, I can't use that because that's stolen right really from helpful the with parkour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why not? I don't know. <laughs> that could be cool. Just have a dinosaur really good with parkour because it just it, it can't fly, but it can glide. So <laughs> the Prince of Persia of, of exactly. dinosaurs. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and uh, speaking of princes, we're talking about a king. That was a pretty good segue, I think. We're talking about the king of the lizard eaters. That's yes. what Sorophaganex means. <laughs> we're talking about Sorophaganex, king of the lizard eaters. <laughs> uh, type is an allosaur theropod. A clade of theropod dinosaurs include the allosaurids. That's per- you think. But then the metriacanthosaurids, like my boy Sinoraptor. <laughs> and the carcarodontosaurids. And then neovenatorids. Neovenator is. I don't know if I know that one. You know Neovenator? That's the only Neovenator I know. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> uh, no, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of other Neo. Um, there's some other ones. I'm- oh, where are my Neovenators? Like, geez, a car car, dontosaur, theropod, dinosaur. Well, I don't know. Crap. <laughs> oh, wait, no, hold on. It's a family Neovenator. Here we go. So I'm right. Here we go. So what else we got is Neovenator? Oh, yeah, the Mega Raptorids are in that family. Oh, okay. Delta Dromius. So. De- that one I know, Delta Dromius. Yeah, yeah. So, but of course, Mega Raptorids, they've been going all over the place, though, because we don't really. 
<laughs> it's just weird. The They're whole always, family tree is just. It's more like a family spaghetti pile. Is this one really called Galacho? Galacho. <laughs> It does. Gu- sa- it does Gula- sound Argentinian. Guli- Gulicio. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it, it lives in what's now Patagonia. Yep. God, Argentina has so many different. You could stub your toe anywhere in Argentina. It's probably a dinosaur. <laughs> it's, the, it's a dinosaur stronghold. <laughs> sort of like Alberta, Canada. <laughs> uh anyways, so, watch as Galaccio is the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Seems so, like a garnish of Galaccio on my eggs, please. <laughs> like, <laughs> <it does>. <laughs> 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 oh Anyways, uh, size so far, it's thirty six to forty two feet mm-hmm. slash eleven point twelve point five meters long, four to seven tons. So this is T Rex size, if not slightly exceeding its this, size. This is why Saurophaganax is my favorite dinosaur because we have a very large theropod, but in the Jurassic, isn't that cool? They usually aren't there. No, I know, and I talk about that later. So yeah, diet carnivore, time late Jurassic, as I said, one hundred fifty two, one hundred fifty one million years ago. Location: Oklahoma. And possibly New Mexico as well. I didn't realize the Norris information stretched all the way down there, but there you go. <laughs> it's actually the state fossil of uh, Oklahoma. It is, and it's in the Sam Noble Museum, a uh, museum that my parents have donated a lot of money to because it's part of o, sponsored by OU, Oklahoma University, where they both yeah. went to college. And because of that, briefly, I don't, I don't think it's still there, they sold Megazoic books in that gift shop. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. So the, so the, the Megazoic... Gift shop, like the gift shop there where they sell Megazoka has a Sorfak like skeleton. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> There's a little elevator we can go up and, and just see the top of the, I think it's an Apatosaurus head. Like that's mm-hmm. like, there's a display has the Apatosaurus and the Sorfak behind it, chasing it. So this is Oklahoma City? This is, yeah, this is Norman, Oklahoma. So it's close to Oklahoma oh, City. Oh, Norman. Okay. Yeah. I went to a really cool museum in Oklahoma City once, but it was not that one. It's not the Sam Noble Museum. No. Nah. Actually, but yeah, no, the Sorfak would be in the you know, Sam Noble Museum. Uh, it was described in 1995. Although literally it was described in 1941 as just Sorophagus until paleontologists realized the name was preoccupied by the living flycatcher lizard. Whoops. <laughs> Slay lops all over again. <laughs> uh, but look, you know, Google wasn't a thing back back in the day. Yeah. You had to read stuff by books. Easier to get easier to get mixed up. <laughs> they had to learn stuff by like going to the library. Ugh. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. I love the library. <laughs> but it's just so much easier to Google stuff. <laughs> But the library, no, support your libraries, kids. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, so, um, pop culture appearances uh, that lovingly ripped off from Pokemon anime Dinosaur King, <laughs> the documentary Planet Dinosaur, the game Prehistoric Kingdom, and the webcomic Morrison by Wyatt Andrews. Oh, webcomic about Morrison. Interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, when it comes to theropod dinosaurs close to or even exceeding the size of T Rex, this is one thing you mentioned, there's one thing they all tend to have in common. They're from the Cretaceous. <laughs> Whether it be Spinosaurus, Giganotosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, Maraxes, Mapusaurus, or Tarbosaurus, all these super massive predators reach their peak in the peak of dinosaur times, which makes sense since evolution needs a bit to catch up and truly produce some awesome predators. But wait, what about one earlier? <laughs> like, what, roughly 60 million years earlier than the earliest of these other ones? Yeah, he's just like, a, he's a, he was a, an early bloomer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got one that reached its maximum bigification, that's a technical term, uh, all the way back in the late Jurassic. And it's one Sorophaganex, which is also considered one of the coolest sounding dinosaur names. It sounds Roman, so it makes me think of Phalanix. Phalanix? <laughs> Sarafaganax. Sar- yeah. Yeah, exactly. Lord. <laughs> I don't like that there's a slur in the middle of it, though, but uh, mm. but it's, it's PH. And also, you say, say it quickly. And also, so, to be fair, that's also a nickname for the end of a cigarette. So, I mean, it's, maybe it's just in the way you're pronouncing it. Sarafaganax. Sarafiganax? Sarafiganax. Uh, well, it's like, it's, it's the same terminology that sarcophagus comes from. So, Sarafaganax. Sar- sarcophagus. Sarafaganax. 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 It's a weird name. Sarafaganax sounds weird, but it does kind of roll off the tongue and it gets rid of the, the, that in the middle. Sarafaganax. 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 You know what I mean, guys. I, <laughs> oh, man. The largest Jurassic predator that we know of, Sarafaganax, is basically Allosaurus, but supersized. The point that some paleontologists have suggested it's actually a separate species of Allosaurus called Allosaurus maximus. Ew. Uh, and when people you depict Allosaurus as only slightly smaller than T-Rex, as in walking with dinosaurs, that's usually the estimates of Sorophaganax they're talking about. Because Allosaurus actually was only like 30 feet long. Like, not 40 feet. Like, it was big. It was not that big. However, more recent cladistic evidence has seemed to conclude that Sorophaganax is different enough to be its own genus. So, yay! Yes! Go Jack ahead. Horner can't take this one away from us. It actually wasn't him that suggested this time. <laughs> but I like to think it was one of his cronies. I can see him doing that, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> three episodes in, three for three, Jack Horner. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that this creature was so big makes sense. Let's take a look at the menu that the late Jurassic North America had to offer. <laughs> Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus, Barosaurus, Diplodocus, Supersaurus, Amphicelius, Camarasaurus, Brachiosaurus, the list goes on. <laughs> I mean, even Stegosaurus was a big animal. Yeah, and I'm just, these are just the long necks. Yeah, the Stegosaurus. Yeah, right. yeah. Camptosaurus was wasn't huge, but it was still like the size of a, a small bus. Like, and it was an iguanodontid, so it wouldn't be able to fend itself quite as well as like as um, Stegosaurus. So all those giant long necked dinosaurs, though, God, someone's got to do something about them, or they'll take over the Earth. <laughs> That's why Sauropteryx. Did it did its thing, but also wasn't alone in the herbivore munching duty, <laughs> as accompanying it or in the roster of more formation predators <laughs> was the aforementioned Allosaurus, but also Ceratosaurus and Torvosaurus. The lot of which always seems to get left out of the conversation for some reason. Yeah, he's he's um uh, he's an outlier. Like, but he, here's the thing: he's not related to the others. He's a megalosaur. Wasn't Torvosaur um East Coast? More uh, East Coast? Cl- I think so. But yeah, it was a megalosaur though, which is pretty cool. So it's like it's not an allosaur like the other ones. It's more closely related to the ancestors of the spinosaurids. That's pretty fun. So that's pretty cool. But uh, as well as munching on herbivorous dinosaurs, uh, these predators also seem to have munched a bit on each other, because we have found bite marks on allosaurs as well as the nautosaurid Mimoropelta that have left striations that, when measured to determine identical width, produce teeth and body size extrapolations greater than any known species of allosaurus. Uh... Interesting. Which means they could only come from Sorphagonex. <sighs> of course. So, uh, <laughs> so like, the fact that these things bit Allosaurus, like, that's conclusive proof these two lived alongside each oh, other. That's what happens in Planet Dinosaur. They depict Yeah. Plan- uh, this Allosaurus gets himself a nice Stegosaurus steak. Oh, wait, here comes Sorphagonex to steal it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it, it makes sense. It's like how there's, like, a leopard and then a lion in the same place. You know, right, it's right. like. I'm sure they did that. Plenty it's of like, times. again, like one's a super predator, one's a predator of slightly less super things. <laughs> Poor Allosaurus gets overshadowed by T-Rex in the media, but even in its time and place, it's still not the biggest. Uh... It's, it really is the other lizard, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Allosaurus, um, since it's always depicted as red, per unwritten law of paleo art, I have to imagine Sorophaganax was purple. Purple? Because that it's more powerful. Sort of like how the Giganosaurus is in... Um, in uh, when Di- no, in Diatopia, purple is a royal color. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So that's kingly. Whenever it's like purple I mean, with like a yellow or orange brow crest. In um, Planet Dinosaur, he was mostly black with a little red. Oh, that's also cool. Which is pretty cool. I imagine like in um, maybe it's because I'm thinking of Thanos, but good. But in in my Megazoic books, of which Sorophagnus is pretty prevalent in the last book, uh, I imagined them as deep purple. But like with golden armor again, Thanos, I guess. But <laughs> that is a very Thanos. But it's a Thanos, dinosaur, so Thanos esque and look. <laughs> or maybe, maybe Imparathon was that way, but Arctana might have had silver armor because he was uh not not as, as big of a he wasn't a lord yet. So <laughs> but yeah, so I just I imagine them as purple. So <laughs> probably should have said that in the book. I never did. <laughs> <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> I didn't really say anyone's color too much. I kind of it took me a long time to figure out what color Cortan is. I still haven't quite figured it out. I imagine he's almost now like kind of bluish, like blue from below. I pictured him blue as well. Yeah, like kind of silvery blue, like a modern lizard. But yeah, so that's pretty much Sorophaganax. All hail the king of the lizard eaters. Hail. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, yeah, that's pretty scary. (laughs) Uh, Not quite as scary as Giganosaurus for some reason. Not not Giganosaurus, sorry. Gigantoraptor. Not quite as scary as Gigantoraptor for for some reason. Again, Gigantoraptor is just very disturbing to look at. At least Sorophaganax is a... I, I would be terrified still, but not quite as like... WTF terrified. Right. Not quite as baffled. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the perfect way to put it. Because <laughs> I feel like I would be so baffled at Gigantoraptor that I would give it enough time to get to me and just... <laughs> but Sora Flagonex, I would know to run. Right. Exactly. Instantly. There's no confusion. You just run. <laughs> Uh, so why is this your favorite dinosaur? Like, I mean, where'd you first learn of it? I guess maybe I first learned of it from Planet Dinosaur. Oh, actually, yes. yeah. Cool. I, back when I was working at Dinosaur Ridge um, in the Dis- the Discovery Center, there's no Sorphagnix there, right? It's just Allosaurus. I think. Uh, yeah, like we don't have any actual bones there, but we would we played Dinosaur Planet Planet Dinosaur on a loop in the little museum. Oh, that's cool. So when it was slow, I'd, I'd be watching, and then I saw Sorphagnix, and I was like, "Wait, there's something bigger in, in than Allosaurus in the Jurassic people. What? Yep, yep. My mind is blown. <laughs> I got really excited. So it is pretty cool. That's like yeah. bigger than T Rex, but in the Jurassic. Yeah, it's like well, yeah, not, it's not I, bigger I, than. T- I read. Yeah, I I did. Read research and i read that its size makes it on par with carnivores like t-rex you know it's funny there does seem to be a clear maximum i mean obviously there would be anyways but like there's so many different 
a theropods that have their super sized uh for like species representatives and they're all about the same size mm. like about t- 20 feet tall 40 feet long Just, that it, that does appear to be how big physically like they, you got yeah. gymnosaurus tyrannosaurus spinosaurus well spinosaurus is a lot longer but it was more lightly built uh, but yeah there's always the chance to find something bigger but yeah. it, it you know consistently so far that that is the pattern i mean like yeah it's for about 40 ish feet long 45 maybe if they got big enough <laughs> I did, yeah, so, but no, just the name just inspires such like importance to me, and like that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted them to be the champion rather than just Allosaurus. Like the main champion was a Sauropithecus and the and Megazoic, the and Era's End. Nice. Yeah, and then it's one of the few dinosaurs that uh, Zolgaren specifically does not save. Remember that, like, mm. yeah, because like he's like, I don't like Sorfagonus. They defeated me. Mm-hmm. I'll save the other ones, I guess. But well, yeah, he was a jerk. <laughs> yeah, he was a jerk. But then, in a real <laughs> twist of irony, the two species he didn't save were the two champ. Spoiler alert for my book: they're the two champions that survive. Uh-huh. So, and that was on purpose because I'm a good writer. <laughs> Anyways, it was on purpose. It make it sound like it wasn't on purpose. It was on purpose, <laughs> but still. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, let's write Sorfagon X 165 million. 65 million, exactly. Maybe 66 million, honestly. It is my favorite, so I kind of have to give it 65 million. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. I mean, yeah. break the rate scale if you want. I don't care. I mean, the only thing, I mean, so we, we kind of talked about this Sorfagon X, if like that, that one syllable could sound offensive to some people. Yeah. That does make me unfortunately uncomfortable. Sorfagon X. Sorfagon X. I don't know. Find another Phalanges. That's why I just call it a Nax for short. Yeah, just Nax. Soronax. It's an Soronax. Okay. It's better than Sorophagus. That was what it was early. That was like, that was. was. Yeah, yeah. Sorophagus. Like, Sor- oh, well, if it's sarcophagus, it would be Sorophagus. 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 So, Sorophaganax. Sorophaganax. Nax is. What is Nax Latin? Latin. Like, That's the king part. So Sar Sara and Axe would just be Lizard King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So well, there you go. Yeah, because yeah, because fa- like Fagus mean it means eater. Like like um, sar- sarcophagus means meat eater. Actually, so that's where it comes from. Okay. Yeah. okay. Also, it's the species name of Al- Albertosaurus. Albertosaurus sarcophagus. Sarcophagus. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Nax. That's the thing to do it. The Nax. Yep. I'm it's just going to start calling Apostrophe it. in AX. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Until they rename it. Or, or Soro apostrophe or Nax. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this week. If you want to get a hold of the show, you can contact me at Matt Z at MatthewDonCreator.com. For any general questions to me or any of the co hosts, you can find me on social media at MatthewDonCreator on Facebook, at MatthewDon64, everywhere else. So Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, whenever I get around to it. <laughs> and where can they find you, Stephen? You can find me at S-T-E-P-H-E-N-C-C-U-R-R-O.com, Stephen C. Curler.com. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I am a writer in my spare time, and you can find all of my shenanigans involving my novelette, poetry, and short stories and other stuff. Yes. And occasionally I dapple on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> I mean, occasionally just dapple along. I occasionally see a like some stuff. Like, occasionally. Just like others. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but- I don't have to announce something that I published or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. I, I, yep, exactly. Uh, also, like I've said many times in this episode, I have a book series on Amazon Megazug available for print and Kindle. You bet your ass there's a sore fag in it. <laughs> like, later on, especially. It's also meant to be kind of mysterious, too, what they are. Because, like, cause like like I said, like he didn't, uh, Zolgaren didn't save them. So when you see the st- statues of the champions, it's like, Whoa, what is you that? see, like, I, I see those other ones. What are these two? <laughs> Is that an Allosaurus? No way. What is it's, it? Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, what is this? Amphicelius? But, uh, but, so. <laughs> and I do have a fantasy dinosaur series. Yes. That eventually that will be published. And yes, I include Sardophaganax. And then they are the Naxes. But you did that for a lot of the other ones too. Like you had the Rexes. What else did you have? What did, what did like you the, the, like the Rex. T-Rexes are Rano. Oh, Rano. Um, that's right. Yes. Ceratosaurus is Ratto. Um, yeah. And then the Naxes. Any pterosaur is Finger Wing. That's true. <laughs> You, did you catch that um, one joke in Tesla Knots, which is my other non-dinosaur related book series um, where there was that restaurant that was in France. Like, ah, oh, Le Fouet Lisiada had only got one star. It's the, it's. Oh, I didn't catch that. Snarly Pterosaur. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> it survived. It did. It survived all the way to Paris and got a one star review, <laughs> as it would. 
<laughs> so yeah. But hey, they deliver late. <laughs> yeah, they do deliver late. Hold on. Uh, yep. All right, that's it for this week. I say at the end of every episode of Paleo Bites. All hail the king of the lizard eaters. <laughs> ah! It's purple. I swear it's purple. <laughs> All right. Yeah.